Hi, I'm Mateusz from Board Game Colors, and today we're going to paint intruders from Nemesis the Board Game. Nemesis has many really cool miniatures in a box, and it would be a crime to leave them unpainted. In this video I will show you a really fast and easy way to paint a whole set to a good tabletop standard with as little effort as possible. This way of painting is totally accessible for beginners, but advanced painters should find something interesting as well. A first and probably most important step in this process gonna be basing. We are going to do zenithal highlight with a black and white primers. I am using spray cans for this, but if you prefer airbrush, feel free to use it. Let's spray our minis black. You need a nice and even coat on the whole figure. Don't forget about all the crevices beneath the models. When you have all of them ready and dry, spray them from above with a white primer. Remember to shake a can with a lot of energy. White paints need a lot of mixing before use. In this step you need to paint your minis from the top. It will create a nice transition between white and black and make an illusion of shadows and light. As you can see, figures ended up a little greyish instead of white. To pump out the final effect we're going to increase the contrast of the figure by dry brushing. Feel free to skip this step if you are impatient. I'm going to use white paint with a tint of blue. In this case it is Vallejo Glacier White. But feel free to use any brand you like or mix it yourself, or even use pure white. I'm using bluish one because later on I want my aliens to have a tint of blue. Pour some of your paint on a paper towel. Then get a big and old brush and put it in your paint. Wipe off majority of it. Now we are going to brush our models just on the top parts, taking special care of sharp details like blades and spikes. Next we are going to repeat this step, but this time using some metallical paints. In my case I use Citadel Runefunk Steel. I'm brushing only the top of the head, armor plates and sharp objects. In the end it will create a subtle metallic shine. Now we are getting to the more interesting part. We are going to prepare our own filter, which is a little translucent paint that will show our base coat from beneath, but also opaque enough so it will change the color of the whole model. I will give you ready recipe later on. But I will love it if at the end of this video you'll prepare your own filter. First, I found all the blue and black paints I have. I also prepared matte varnish and glazing medium, which are going to be useful later on. Let's start experimenting! What I want to get is really dark, saturated blue. I picked my strongest blue colors and compared them against each other. Then I added some black to check how they will mix with it. I noticed that lighter colors tend to get really desaturated, or in other words, greyish. We don't want that. We need our mix to be vibrant. I decided to proceed with Vallejo Night Blue. I also want to compare it with Daler and Rowney's Paints Grey Acrylic Ink. If you are not familiar with inks, they are basically really fluid paint with a strong, strong pigment. I started mixing them with black in different proportions until I got what I wanted. I ended up with two good mixes. First, one to two mix of Citadel Abaddon Black and Vallejo Night Blue. And second, one to one mix of DR Ink and Night Blue. I'm going to proceed with second one. 
Also, please remember that those recipes are not exact, so don't be stressed about getting same proportions. Now let's prepare our mixture. You will need some kind of pot and pure water. Also, some kind of mud varnish and a mixing medium could be useful, but they are not mandatory. Also, don't try to save on paint here, as we are going to paint the whole set of aliens with it. First I'm going to add 1 to 1 mix of Glacier Blue and Ink. Next I'm adding Mud Varnish, about half the amount of Glacier Blue. This ingredient is to reduce the glossiness of the final model, so if you like your model's glossy, feel free to skip it. After that I add a few drops of glaze medium, but you might also add some dry retardant or citadel lachina medium. It is not mandatory, but it helps to mix paint properly and dries a little slower so we can fix any mistakes we do while we paint. Finally, we need to dilute this mix even further with water. I am adding it to get about 1 to 1 mix, but as you can see it is really rough estimation. Basically, your mix needs to look something like that and be really transparent after you apply it. See? Something like this. Now on to application. This part gets dirty, so you probably don't want to have your best clothes on and avoid having your hair looms on the table. So what we're going to do is to apply our paint on figure. You don't need to be precise. Just watch out for any big pools of paint and smear them on the rest of the figure. After you're done with one figure, check if you painted it nicely and fix any issue you see. In my case, there are always some pools of paint on the armor to spread around the mini. Paint the whole set with this technique. Just leave bases for now. When you're ready, Check out if your minis are dark enough for your taste. If not, just repeat this process on the parts that are too bright. One important thing. This kind of mix needs some time to dry and get full opacity. So be patient and decide about the next steps after it is fully dry. If you just can't wait and want effects crazy fast, get your hairdryer to speed up the process. Just remember to use cold air. While my paint dries, I'm going to finish up the bases. I'm doing a fast dry brush on the grid with green stuff world metallic paint, anthrax metal. But any metallic color will do. I'm also painting all other stuff with the same color. After it dries, I'm going to use a wash on it. You can use any brown wash you have, but I am mixing mine with some black paint, red ink and water. The important part here is to use a warm color of the wash to get a nice contrast between bases and our aliens, which have a cold color scheme. This way, in the end, they will stand out nicely on the board. Now onto some finishing touches. We're going to paint all the soft tissue of these creatures with magenta and highlight it with pink. For this step I'm using Scale Color Artist Magenta, but any similar color like Citadel Screamer Pink will do. If you don't have any magenta paint, try mixing some intense blue with red until you get it. With that, Let's pick out all soft spot of our aliens. For me, this is inside of its mouth, all tendons on the arms, this ripped gill like thing on their legs and crouch, and some tiny details specific to different alien models. Next, we are going to highlight it with light pink paint. In my case, Citadel Full Green Pink. 
take some special care of all the strings and ribs so they will stand out nicely in the end. If you have any problem doing it precisely, try out using the side of your brush. After that I'm also adding some metallical shine to fangs and blades. One good tip for this is to use side of your brush on sharp parts to create a nice thin line. Now let's add some slime. For this we're gonna need a intense bright green color and something to create a glossy finish. For the gloss we can use some kind of water effect, mediums or gloss varnishes. In my case I'm going to use Citadel Art Coat. For the paint Citadel Mood Green is great, but especially for you I'm going to get the same color just mixing green and yellow. After the color is ready, add anything you have for the gloss and mix it. It is really important to make it really thick and do not dilute it. It will create physical texture on the figures later on. Now let's splat some of this mixture on our aliens. I'm putting it on the holes of their chests, on their blades and claws. Also, some splatters on the bases will look really nice. Just do not put it everywhere, unless you want to overwhelm the whole figure in the end. If you want to push it even more, do so. Be creative. I, for example, added drool on some of the models by using great tutorial made by Squidma. You will find link below. Finally, let's paint base rims black and varnish our figures, if you like, of course. Just try to avoid varnishes in spray cans, as they tend to create creamy white dots on your models and might destroy the final effect. I usually just apply Vallejo varnishes with a brush. And this is basically it. Painting this whole set took me about 9 hours and I'm really happy with the results. But if you like, you can put some more work. So, you, you, and you. Did you like this video? Maybe you have some suggestions on how I can improve in the future. I'm just starting with YouTube, so any kind of feedback, likes, and subscriptions mean plenty to me. And with that said, thank you for watching. Have some happy painting, and see you next time.